So I don't usually do product reviews, but I wanted to share my experience in purchasing and using an electric bike since I've received a lot of questions from friends on this purchase and also because it resonates with some of the ideas for conservation shared on my channel. I recently picked up a Ride One Up Roadster V2. I did so for three reasons. The first being that this is the only affordable e-bike on the market that doesn't actually carry the weight or look of a heavier electric bike. In fact, it's low weight means I can still manage this bike without any electrical assist should my ride extend beyond the range of available battery power. The second is tied to the positive online reviews from other users. I agree and I won't repeat what others have already shared, but thought it might be interesting to share my own experience after the odometer hit 500 miles. This would give viewers an idea of how well the bike has performed over time rather than sharing initial impressions from a factory fresh delivery. My third reason is not related to the bike itself, so I'll leave that towards the end for those who just want to hear about the experience. So I purchased the bike during last year's Black Friday sale, but I really didn't start using it until March of this year. I see prices have gone up since then, but even with the increase, it's still one of the most affordable electrics on the road. With the Black Friday cost savings, I added a Knight Rider Lumina 900 headlight and a Cygolite Hypershot 350 lumen bike taillight and a bike rack with a milk crate on the back to throw my books or the occasional light grocery haul. For context on me and my commute, I'm 54 years old, I'm six foot one inches tall, and I weigh 210 pounds, and I've been commuting on a bike to work and school for decades now. My typical bike commute is from my home in the Tucson Mountains here in Arizona to Pima Community College, a ride that includes a two mile hill before hitting a bike path that runs another six miles along the Santa Cruz River and then exits near my college. For my commute to Pima, I keep the assist off for the initial two mile downhill ride, preferring to engage electrical assist on the bike path and when returning back up the same hill to my home. When commuting on the bike path, I've never had to use an assist level greater than two out of a possible five, even with the headwind. At assist level two, the added weight of the bike is offset to give the bike the feel of my 1980s Nishiki Prestige on a clear day with no headwind. Now, since I mentioned my old Nishiki, I know there are many of you who feel that riding an e-bike is, quote, cheating. I hear you, and I was in that camp myself for many years. However, for general commuting at assist level one or two, the bike still keeps my heart rate well above 120 beats per minute. The only difference being that I can shave off about 15 minutes off my eight mile commute one way at an average speed of about 16 miles an hour. On my return, I can easily manage the two mile hike up the hill on electrical assist too, regardless of the bike being a single speed belt driven heavy e-bike. In fact, I've even managed to push the bike up this same hill with no assist at all, although notably with significant effort. Regardless, the fact that I could actually ride the bike uphill with no assist means it hits the sweet spot for me personally for an e-bike purchase since I know I won't ever be stranded. At the conclusion of my 16 mile ride, really 14 miles with assist, I usually have three bars of power left on my battery, which I charge overnight for my next ride. Bike is plugged in. So how has the bike done after the first 500 miles? Frankly, it feels exactly the same way as when it came out of the box with no witness change in battery or assist performance. However, there are a couple of minor things to be aware of. The first is the drive system, which relies on a top trans belt, which can get a little stiff over time. This can lead to the belt slipping with noise appearing to come from the internal hub in the rear wheel. When I first encountered this, I was worried the bike might be suffering from some defect in the motor but upon reviewing the Ride One Up website, I discovered this is normal for belt-driven bikes and can easily be remedied by liberally applying some CRC heavy-duty silicone spray. Doing so addressed the problem for me personally without the need for further adjustment. Ride One Up does have a nice summary on their website of other things to try if needed, although no further adjustment has been needed in my own first 500 miles. The second has to do with the electronic display mounted to the handlebars. 
The computer and mount are one solid piece of plastic, so if the mount breaks due to plastic fatiguing from road vibration, you'll need to purchase a new display from what otherwise should be a fairly simple repair. This in fact happened to me and I subsequently reached out to ride one up within the warranty period and I'm happy to report that the company sent a replacement. However, had this happened out of warranty, I would have been faced with paying $50 for replacing a simple piece of cracked plastic. One way to mitigate this is to apply some rubber strips under the plastic mount as is usually done with other handlebar mounted hardware. Maybe from an old inner tube so that fatigue doesn't set in as quickly and you don't end up with a larger bill. Those are the only minor inconveniences I've encountered after my first 500 miles riding the Roadster V2. Thus far the bike has performed well above what I would have expected for this relatively modest investment, especially when compared with what I might pay for another electric bike. For those of you who want an e-bike with the look and feel of a road bike that can still deliver a workout while getting you to your destination in a shorter amount of time, I think it's well worth it. Finally, I mentioned a third reason for buying this electric. Needless to say, things are a bit challenged on the climate change front with oil dollar supporting regimes that are not friendly to Western democracies. Will my first 500 miles on this electric bike make a difference on this front? Probably not, but it does make me feel a little better knowing that it's something I can do within my control. In this regards, I do appreciate the fact that 1UP does offer a $40 discount for customers willing to eliminate at least two car trips per month with an electric bike. That advocacy is something that resonates with me personally, and it certainly makes it easier for me to support this company over its competitors. To be clear, I've received no compensation from 1UP for this review, or frankly any product for that matter that I've evaluated on my channel. I'm just happy to share my e-bike experience with others where we might all collectively make a difference, noting the 1UP Roadster is a good alternative. Please subscribe for updates if you'd like to hear how things are going after the first thousand miles, which I should hit early next year. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.